The Z9 has had more firmware updates than I've had cups of coffee this week, and that's saying something. It just keeps getting smarter and smarter and it kind of feels like we're all along for the ride. When it was first announced or first released, it was already kind of, I hate the word, but for Nikon at least, it was a game changer. It was such a leap forward over the other cameras in the range. No mechanical shutter, a blazingly fast stack sensor. It brought in kind of everything at that point that was state-of-the-art technology into one camera. And admittedly, it's been several years since it was released, but we just keep getting more and more firmware updates. And I think it's fair to say no Nikon camera, no other flagship, or maybe even no other camera on the market has had so much functionality added via firmware since its release. And the major firmware updates didn't just fix bugs. They fundamentally changed the camera. We had new 8K uh, internal recording options, internal RAW usability options. It's just evolved and evolved with every six months or so, another big firmware update coming out. And today, right now, pretty much, Nikon have dropped another firmware update. This time it's firmware version 5.30. And if you already own the Z9, it does feel like just another free bonus that kind of refreshes it as a brand new camera. Before we get into all of that, I wanna let you know about a brand new course that I have going live over at my education website, which is focused on creator-led photography and video. You'll learn how to work collaboratively with creators, capture authentic, intimate imagery and videos that fit their overall aesthetic. It's my first course of this type and it's packed with real shooting sessions, a lot of your favorite models, technical guidance and tips for posing and working with models. You can see full details in my link tree below. Now, just to kind of position this firmware update, I haven't gotten it yet. I got the press release, I've read through what's going on, but I'll have a link below where you can download the firmware update and install it for yourself. It's a pretty seamless uh, process. But this isn't one new headline spec being added. This seems like an across the board kind of usability update. And I do tend to take companies' press releases with a grain of salt, but seeing their track record and how much things have improved via firmware updates, I don't see any reason why they would exaggerate it now. And it does sound really fantastic, but keep in mind, I'm basing this off the press release, not having tested this firmware update, we'll be sure to do that soon. Now, I've got some notes here. Essentially, the update is about overall confidence, faster autofocus decisions, better tracking, smarter automation, and more creative control, especially for people who are using the camera in demanding situations. So let's talk about the features that I think, you know, users of this camera are going to care most about. The headline upgrades are all about autofocus. So specifically, subject acquisition and tracking for fast moving subjects. So athletes, wildlife, anything unpredictable, the Z9 should is claiming that it's now going to lock on faster, hold on to them more reliably, and noticeably be more stable when subjects change direction or change speed. Now, I'm already supremely happy with this, and there's few situations where I can't get the job done, but it's true that just every six months, different companies are leapfrogging each other in terms of their autofocus capabilities, so that'll be great to see. There are other cameras in the Nikon range I would like to see these kind of performance come to, but still, if it's an upgrade, I'll take it even if it's for such a capable camera. But what's important, what I think is maybe more important than those kind of ethereal, it's faster or it locks on better, is that the subject detection has been opened up into more modes now. So it's not, it also works now, sorry, in single point and dynamic AF, which is gonna give us more control for the kind of things you're shooting. So you can tell the camera where you want the focus point to start, but then learn, let what they're calling Nikon's deep learning handle what it's going to be grabbing onto and stay with them. Um, you can also assign subject detection to a custom button, which is really handy, so then you can just toggle on and off subject detection. There are times where, for example, I'm shooting a person and I want it to grab them, but then we're in a busy environment where there's 50 people walking around and it just gets too busy. I might want to turn the subject detect off and just use my 3D tracking and select the person that I want. That can be a 
a really handy way to do it. If you want more tips like that on how to get the most out of your Nikon camera, check out my expert setup guide. We run through every camera in the system. It actually started off when the Z9 was first released. It was a Z9 guide, and I expanded it to cover every different camera in the system. We also cover major firmware updates for each camera, and this new update will be there before too long. You can see details of that in my link tree below as well. Something else that's been added here that is great is in-camera's focus limiter. It's not the first time that Nikon are having this, but really handy to be able to say, for example, don't just ignore everything in the first 15 meters and everything from 70 meters beyond. I know my subject's going to be in that range. If you ever are shooting, for example, birds is a, an obvious one where the focus gets stuck in the background and then doesn't cycle back to the correct distance to be able to find your subject again. This is really going to help prevent that. If you are shooting a subject that or a scene or a genre where you know your action is going to be between these two points, set the focus limiter and the camera will save time and kind of processing power, not even examining those areas outside there. There's also updates to auto capture. It's getting smarter for want of a better word. Um, there's an AF standby position, better face detection, and they're saying overall improved reliability. Basically, you're able to have it be a trap. So you set it out there, tell it all the parameters of what you want it to shoot and when and for how long, depending on what it sees, without needing to use any kind of triggers. So that's really handy, you just leave it out there. So if you're shooting wildlife or sports and you're in an area where you have limited access and you basically need to leave your camera, the more and more customizations you have to be able to have the camera set up right follow your parameters to get the shot, the more likely you are to get the exact shot that you're looking for. There's also some new features for creative control using the flexible color picture controls now. Um, 5.3 is going to let you work with all of those via NX Studio. So instead of relying on the generic picture styles that are in our cameras, you can now build your own looks, adjusting the hue and brightness and contrast and all of that kind of stuff. And you can see those changes live in the viewfinder. This is something that I did a video on that it's there for like the Z6 III. I'll link to that one below. It's actually a really powerful feature and quite cool that we're able to use that on this camera now. So more TTL, basically you set it up and then you're exactly seeing the final look. So if you know you're going to edit these in a, a retro style or in a really high contrast or something, you can build a, your own profile and see it as you're shooting. Just running through, there's more than that in this update. There's a bunch of small things that I think, depending on what you're shooting, could add up to a real win for you. So just running through them, you've got maximum aperture focusing in live view now, really handy, 400% magnification to be able to zoom in to check your critical focus. Uh, external microphones can be used for adding voice memos instead of relying on just the internal one. It's got a larger wide area autofocus zone, which is great. I always found that the large was actually kind of small. New flat and deep tone monochrome profiles, built-in USB streaming. I do as much overkill as it is. I do often use my Z8 and Z9 as webcams when I'm on video calls. Nothing like being the photographer on the call who has amazing picture quality, but I use a special HDMI adapter for that. Cool that you'll be able to do it with uh, USB. Um, I don't know what this means exactly, but better HDMI record uh, behavior after recording. I don't know what that means exactly. And for the guys who are monitoring my cameras right now, great, it's going to have headphone volume adjustment during video, so you don't have to do that just between clips. Now, none of those on their own are worthy of an update or even worthy of a mention, but all of these things do add up. If the autofocus helps you and then one or two of those do as well, then that's meaningful. And anyway, if you own this camera, you get all of them for free. I think what excites me most about this isn't the update itself and what it's adding. It's kind of the signal that Nikon is sending us that they're still treating the Z9 as kind of a living platform. It's being updated, it's not a finished product, and they're not, like so many brands, just replacing it after a year and then the old one just gets discarded. I'm sure I don't need to mention other brands for you to know who that could be. Um, more speed, more versatility, more control, more confidence, and it's all for free. Um, 
have to say, I do look forward to a Z9 II, however, bringing things like uh, pre-capture in RAW, things that seem to have a, for, a hardware limitation that this isn't able to bring. But the fact that they're still updating, they're still bringing meaningful new features to the camera, I'm kind of thrilled that I don't have to spend more money to keep getting new features. Let me know if you're using the Z9 or which of the cameras, I think I've said Z and Z, both pronunciations in this one video. If you own one of these, let me know or which Nikon camera you're shooting with. Also, what other features you're hoping will come. I know pre-capture RAW is gonna be on the top of everyone's list. Um, you can see my new creator course as well as the Nikon setup guide and all my other stuff in my link tree in the description below. Cheers, guys.